the update for the Sony FX3 is very impressive. But maybe you shouldn't be using the new Cine EI. Now today we are looking at the new update for the Sony FX3 and specifically looking at the new Cine EI mode in the camera. Now if you don't know what Cine EI is, there are plenty of other great YouTube videos out there that explain it in far more detail than I ever could. Especially people like Alistair Chapman who's done plenty of videos about Cine EI over the years. I strongly recommend to watch one of those videos if you want to learn a lot more about the actual techniques of how to shoot with Cine EI. Now this way of shooting has been around for a very long time with Sony cinema cameras, whether it's the Sony FS7, the Sony F55, or newer cameras like the FX6 and FX9. It's great to see that it has now been added to the FX3 to bring it in line with those cameras, making it much more compatible when working with those cameras on a set. However, is it something that you should use? Now a quick explanation of what Cine EI actually is. It stands for Exposure Index. Well, basically it limits you to using just the native ISOs of a camera. So in the case of the Sony FX3, it means you can only shoot either at 800, which is up from 640 for some reason, not sure why, or 12,800. This is so you get the maximum dynamic range in the recording. If you try and adjust like the ISO on the back of the camera like you normally would, all you're actually changing is the exposure index. And as you do so, you're seeing it change on the screen, but it's not actually changing the recorded file itself. It's almost like you're just adjusting the LUT uh, with uh, different uh, stops of exposure up and down as a preview rather than actually baking it into the file itself. Now that information is saved as metadata and if you're using things like Catalyst Browse you can actually go in and access it but I think that's an extra step that most people won't want to do. The whole point of this mode is to maximize the dynamic range. You know, it's quite common with other cameras and different manufacturers and everything in the past, people to stick to the ISO and try not to move away from there. Adjusting other things like the aperture, your lighting or your ND instead to get the exposure that you need. And this is sort of a way for the camera to force you to do that. The exposure index is actually designed to allow you to easily over or under expose the camera while still seeing a, a good image on the back of the screen. So for example, a lot of people do like to slightly overexpose Sony cameras to clean the shadows up and this is something that you could certainly do with Cine EI. Now because the recorded image is only going to be at the native ISO either maybe slightly under or overexposed it does mean an extra step in post-production. It means you're going to have to adjust your exposure in post to bring it in line with how it should look. For example if you uh, underexpose the image you're obviously going to have to bring that up or if you're overexposed you're going to have to bring it back down. Because you are limited to the two native ISOs it is one less thing you can adjust to get the exposure you want in camera. It means now you need to add either more light or add ND to adjust your exposures to the correct levels. So with all this in mind, should you actually be shooting in Cine EI? Well, I'm going to say it depends. It's great that it's been added to the FX3. There's a lot of good reasons why it should be there and perhaps you should have been there from the start. However, I don't think it's for everyone and that's what the whole point of this video is about. So when should you shoot with Cine EI? Well, it certainly makes a lot of sense if you're shooting on a multi-camera set with bigger cameras like the FX6 and FX9, which also shoot in this mode. All shooting at the same native ISO in Cine EEI is going to certainly make doing a multi-cam and matching the shots much, much easier. So it makes a lot of sense when shooting with the FX3 with its bigger brothers. This mode also works quite well if you're shooting on a set that you have some control over. So for example, you can add in more light or add ND just to make sure that you're always sticking on that native ISO and getting the absolute maximum dynamic range. Finally, it makes a lot of sense when you have plenty of time in post to really maximize the image, really kind of finesse it and get the best quality out of it as possible. As I mentioned, if you use the exposure index to under or overexpose an image, it does mean you're going to have that extra step in the post-production to either bring down uh, the highlights or increase the shadows, depending on which way you shot. 
However, I don't think this is for everyone. I think there are a lot of situations where this mode really won't be that useful and it's actually better to stick to other modes instead. Either sticking in the off setting and using the camera as you did before or using flexible ISO, which is very similar to before, but with a new menu system and limited to S-Log3. So what situations would I not use Cine EI in? I certainly wouldn't use it in run and gun situations. Not being able to easily adjust your ISO and capture the image exactly how you want it in camera at that exact moment could be quite frustrating. I think it'd be much easier to stick to using flexible ISO or the uh, standard picture profiles instead. Fast turnaround work is another big reason not to be using Cine EI. It is a slow process to go through in post-production if you end up adjusting uh, the exposure index. And really, if you're doing a fast turnaround, Around, chances are you don't really have that much time to do post-production. It'd be much better to get the image you want as closely in camera, even if that does mean then just applying a LUT at the end. Similar to fast turnaround, I'd also suggest unless you're handing this over uh, to a post-production facility, a proper editor who knows exactly how Cine EI works, I certainly wouldn't want to hand over footage shot uh, in Cine EI and expect the client to know how to use that footage. The chances are they'll just get very confused about it being either over or underexposed, despite the fact that you shot it completely correctly. Finally, I wouldn't use the mode if shooting with other Sony mirrorless cameras. And that's kind of the situation we are with our Sony FX3. We often pair the FX3 with an A7 IV as an AB camera combo, and they work brilliantly together. It is great now that if you want to pair the FX3 with the bigger brothers like the FX6 and FX9, you've now got the same modes. However, if you're going the other way and the FX3 is your A camera and you're using uh, Sony mirrorless cameras below it, then certainly I think sticking to flexible ISO makes a lot more sense. It means all the post-production of the image is going to be the same across the board with all the cameras. So there you go, there's a few reasons why you shouldn't be shooting Cine EI with the FX3. It is an awesome update. It's great that they've decided to add this to the camera. It certainly makes it much more professional for when on bigger sets. However, I think for a lot of people, don't feel like you have to use it. Just because they've added the feature doesn't mean that you need to use it all the time. There is no problem just carrying on using the FX3 as you did before. In terms of the rest of the update for the FX3, there's some cool additions. I do like the new menu, it does look very nice. I also like the uh, display screen with much neater information around the edge of the screen now. That is great too. We've also gained things like timecode input, which is really useful, as well as custom LUTs. Unfortunately though, the one thing that absolutely everyone was asking for, shutter angle, that's still not there. Hopefully one day we will get it from Sony to make it truly a cinema camera. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. There'll be plenty more FX3 videos in the future. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.